Femke Boot was a columnist who regularly wrote articles for a publishing company. That day, Femke was invited to the talk show to discuss her article, which discussed the rise of hate speech on social media. She stated that it was normal for people to disagree with something or someone, but the culture of medicines who like to berate and use inappropriate words must be stopped because humans must respect each other. Another guest star, namely a famous novelist named Stephen Dude, had an opinion that humans were free to express their opinions and should not be irritated by netizens' blasphemy. The next day at the office, Femke was asked by her boss to immediately finish her book in addition to her daily duties as an article columnist, knowing the capacity of Femke who could produce books that would sell on the market. Femke lived alone with her daughter Anna and had been divorced from her husband for a long time. When she returned from the office, Femke saw her daughter reading a novel created by Stephen, a writer who debated her on yesterday's talk show. According to Anna, Stephen was a good and unique writer. After that, Femke continued to look for ideas for her book, but her neighbor kept making noises that broke her focus. She became even more fed up after seeing netizens' comments on her Twitter, blaspheming and cursing. Some even threatened to kill her just because they didn't like her or the article she wrote. Annoyed because this incident had been going on for so long, Femke reported it to the police. But the police advised her not to pay attention to netizen comments and never open social media again because everything on the internet wouldn't do anything to her life. On the other hand, Anna, who was also talented in writing, was given an ultimatum by the principal in her school because she wrote an article in the school magazine criticizing the principal with harsh words, but Anna argued back against the principal because according to her, the writing she wrote was objective. In the end, she was banned from writing anything that was deemed to spread hatred. That afternoon, after taking Anna, Femke went shopping and while browsing the aisle, she checked her Twitter again and found more and more insults towards her and shockingly, one of them turned out to be a man next door who often made noise a man named Arjun Toll. Femke, who came home immediately met Arjun and made small talk. After that, she checked Arjun's Twitter, which turned out to be filled with negative sentences, complaints, blasphemy, and cursing. Femke, who was getting more irritated after she lost her bike, ended up destroying the fence Arjun just made that day. The next morning, Arjun came to Femke's house to ask if she happened to see someone who had broken the fence while giving her the food her wife just cooked. Femke said that she didn't see anything and then accepted the food which she immediately threw away, worried it was poisoned. When Femke was going to write her book again, she once again got disturbed by Arjun who was fixing his roof. At that moment, Femke checked Arjun's tweets until finally got enough of it and driven by her madness, she pushed Arjun from the roof and killed him. Not only that, but his middle finger was also taken as a collection. Without her realizing it, she had turned into a psychopath due to pressure from her boss and the insults from netizens on her social media, but the incident somehow gave her the idea to write her book, and for the first time, she continued her work fluently. On the other hand, Arjun was finally buried and Femke felt so at peace because there were no more distractions. After that, she also gave a camera as a gift to his daughter, Anna. At the writer meeting, Femke met with Steven again, who said that he deliberately argued with Femke at the last talk show so that his book could sell well. Femke said that she didn't mind it because she didn't care about anything or anyone anymore. The relationship between the two became closer. They even went home riding on a bike that night and ended up in a passionate night. As the days passed, Anna was happy to see her idol getting closer to her mother and the three of them spent more time together like a family. One day, Femke and Steven were working together when Femke saw the comments in her article column which were almost all blasphemous. Even though Steven had reminded her not to read the comments, Femke was still thinking about it, especially one of the comments from a netizen named Diederik, which irritated her the most. That night, Femke had a hard time sleeping so she decided to stalk Diederik's Facebook, and after finding his address, Femke immediately went there to kill him. Just like before, she took his middle finger, put it in a cereal box, and put it in the freezer at home. The next morning after she killed Diederik, Femke was full of ideas and had no slightest difficulty in writing her books. She thought that her killing people would help her deal with her stress. After that, Femke and Steven went shopping and had dinner together. Femke said that every human being had their own hatred and anxiety within themselves and she had found the solution to get rid of those feelings for a while, which she admitted by playing video games. However, Steven disagreed because according to him, not everyone had hate within them. Femke continued to write and once again was stuck with no idea, so while Steven and Anna were watching the news in the living room about the death of Diederik, who was murdered in his own house where the police were still looking for who the perpetrator was, she scrolled through the comments on Twitter to look for the cruelest comments towards her. The next target was a man named Jeroen. After Steven and Anna went to bed, so that they wouldn't suspect anything, Femke wrote a note that she was going to the convenience store to buy something and after that, she immediately left, but just after she left her house, one of her neighbors saw her and Femke greeted her before leaving. 
This time, Femke was more prepared. She brought her own tools. After confronting Jerome, who at that time was bathing, Jerome immediately apologized and said that his blasphemy was just for fun but Femke didn't care and without any hesitation, killed him by electrocuting him. After cutting and taking Jerome's middle finger, Femke felt so relieved because she was able to write again without any single regret of the brutality and atrocities she just committed. After that, she kept murdering anyone who slandered her, especially those who gave the most cruel comments. One night when Femke had just come home from killing, Stephen was already waiting for her at the door. He felt jealous because he thought she had met another man behind him. While hiding her bloody hands, Femke answered that she had just left drinking at the coffee shop and thankfully, Stephen believed her. The next morning at the office, Femke had a new problem. Her boss showed emails from people to the publishing company showing how much they hated Femke. They even threatened to boycott all the books published by the company until Femke was fired. The email said that Femke was a pedophile just because Femke once dated her junior at school, but her boss ignored these unimportant emails and instead, they would be printed on the back cover of one of the magazines so that the company could become more and more viral. When Femke got home, Anna confessed that she was annoyed because the principal kept banning her works about freedom of speech from being published, and without wasting more time, Femke came to her daughter's school and followed the principal who was on his way home. But she thwarted her plan after seeing how that the principal's wholesomeness with his family, and most importantly, the principal never acted towards her. After Femke returned home, she was surprised when Anna told her that two policemen were coming there, one of whom was the policeman whom she had met. Their arrival there was because of a telephone complaint from someone saying that Femke was holding a child hostage in her house. Femke calmly explained that it was impossible for her to do that and the complaint must have been from someone who hated her. That person must have exaggerated her previous tweets when she was still dating her junior back at school. Femke was sure that the person must be from a Twitter account called Bosk About Her, who used a cartoon profile picture and always blasphemed her all the time. In fact, many people were influenced by that people and joined in blaspheming her. She didn't know who that person was until finally one of the police accidentally said that the owner of the Twitter account was someone called Tarek. Most likely the policeman was one of Bosk About Her's followers. After the two police left, Femke immediately searched for Tarek's name on Google with various keywords, but no suspicious account was found. On the other hand, Anna, who had just come home from school, accidentally found a green bag containing the tools that Femke used for murder, all covered in blood. She was shocked and immediately took a photo. The only name that slipped in her mind was Stephen. She was sure that he was the murderer that the police were looking for. The next day, Anna asked Femke subtly whether she felt strange about Stephen, but Femke answered that it was his strangeness that she liked and it was natural for Anna to feel so when adapting to the new man in their house. That night, while everyone was watching TV, all of Anna's attention was on Steven. After that, Femke went back to looking for Tarek's identity on Facebook, but still couldn't find anything until she opened one of her articles where there was an account whose language style was almost the same as Tarek's that was written by someone called Trinstein 9. She was sure that the two accounts must be the same person. Femke finally got Trinstein 9's real name, Arend. She immediately left the house to find the guy, but she forgot to bring her green bag and only brought an iron paint scraper. When she arrived at Arend's house, it turned out that he was an old man. Femke immediately pointed his knife at him and tied him to the heater. Without the slightest fear, Arend spat at her. Meanwhile, at the same time, his wife was on the computer using headphones and didn't realize that her husband was being held captive. When Femke looked for where the computer room was, Aren was able to untie himself and then immediately warned his wife to call the police and hide. After that, he took his rifle and started looking for Femke. He found her in the yard and pinned her down with his rifle handle, but when he was off guard, Femke scratched him and took the rifle. At the same time, Anna was holding a seminar about the right to freedom of speech, which was attended by parents and guardians of students. She was surprised to see that only Stephen came even though her mother had promised to come to the event and would make a speech. In the end, Anna decided to replace her mother by reading a speech written by her mother, in which the content of the speech was about the right to free speech. Ironically, at that time, Femke was hunting a wren because her hatred controlled her, which meant that she no longer allowed anyone to blaspheme her or, in other words, contrary to the speech she wrote. When the police came, Femke immediately ran away from there. When she arrived home, she explained to Anna that her car had broken down and she couldn't come to the seminar to give a speech, but Anna was too angry at that time, she decided to leave without hearing any explanation, and the next day, she immediately went to her father's house to plan to stay there. Femke kept sending voice messages to Anna to apologize and tell her that tomorrow was the day when her new book would be launched so she wanted Anna to be there, but Anna ignored her. After that, Femke continued her evening walk with Stephen. 
Stephen told her that her article that was just posted on Facebook got a lot of praise except for the four accounts that were still blaspheming her. Femke was very shocked when he saw that one of the accounts that was blaspheming him was Tarek Boss, which meant that the target of last night was not Tarek and she finally knew the owner of Boskabouter's account. The next morning Anna returned home, she wanted to forgive her mother and didn't want to miss her mother's book launch, but before going to the event, Femke, who already knew Tarek's address, immediately took a Ren's shotgun and went there. At the same time, Anna met Steven and took out all the tools she found while saying that she knew who Steven really was and a serial killer who was currently wanted by the police. Steven immediately denied it and there was only one name that popped in his mind, Femke, especially since Femke often left home at night for various reasons. Shortly after, it found lots of human fingers in the cereal box in the fridge. Steven realized that Femke's next target was Tarek because her gesture was strange when she saw Tarek's Facebook account. Steven quickly found Tarek's address and rushed there. Meanwhile, Femke who had arrived immediately shot Tarek's father and went up to the second floor to kill Tarek. That was the time when she found out that Tarek was just a teenager. Tarek could only apologize and cry because he just wanted to make a joke on the internet. Femke was very mad said that Tarek was a teenager who could only blaspheme on the internet but a loser in real life. She told him to respect fellow humans and give good comments even though he had a different opinion. Then suddenly, Steven showed up and surprised Femke, who accidentally pulled the rifle's trigger and killed Tarek even though she initially wanted to forgive him. Steven said that she shouldn't do such cruel things and that no one deserved to be killed just because of blasphemy. Femke thought that Steven was defending the people who blasphemed her and in the end she also killed him. On the other hand, Anna was so shocked to find out that her mother was a serial killer. She arranged the fingers she found one by one on the countertop and took a photo of them. After killing Steven and having blood splatter on her face, neck, and clothes, Femke casually came to the book launch event and surprised everyone. Somehow, they actually appreciated Femke, who was considered to show artistic value and emotional expression according to her book which had a mystery thriller theme, not realizing that the blood on her body was indeed human blood and Femke was a serial killer.